We live in a society today where virtually everyone, from kids, teenagers to adults, has their own mobile phones, their own computers, laptops, knows how to use the computer, browse the internet to communicate, uh, call, text, or even chat their loved ones, friends, families, and those relatives that are far from them. Well, do we know that through this, we are making use of what we call the information and communications technology. By definition, ICT refers to the use of mobile phones, computers, laptops, and other handheld devices for us to be able to communicate, locate, send, download, upload, and alter data using the internet or even Bluetooth, peer-to-peer -peer connections, and the likes. ICT is being used all around the globe, including here in the Philippines, which is dubbed as the ICT hub of Asia. Why? Maybe because there are a lot of BPO companies. A lot of people here in the Philippines has their own mobile phones. Not just one, even two, three. A lot of people post their selfies online on a daily basis. Twitter posts, Facebook posts, YouTube videos, and etc. That is why we are dubbed as the ICT Hub of Asia. ICT has started from the humble beginnings, from peer-to-peer -peer connection, from the invention of the first telephone, the first cellular phone, the first smartphone, and etc. But none of those pale in comparison to the invention of the internet. The internet started small. First, it was just a local network for the government of America to send their research from one location to another. But then came the W3, or the World Wide Web, which was of course created by Tim Berners-Lee. In the early days of the internet, most web pages are considered to be static web pages. These web pages cannot be altered by the user. You cannot do anything with it but read the contents, look at the pictures it has, and etc. You cannot alter it. You do not have any participation with the website. Only the owner of the website can alter the features and the look of the website. And that was called Web 1.0. But then it evolved into Web 2.0. During its evolution, it has started to see what we call dynamic web pages. Dynamic websites are the websites wherein you can input your own data on the platform. For example, Facebook, or even Friendster, for instance, back in the day, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and etc. Those are all dynamic web pages. Each and everyone in the world sees the website differently. Everyone sees their different contents. Everyone can add their own contents. Those are dynamic web pages. With the evolution of the internet came more features that the user can enjoy. One of these features is called Folksonomy. It allows the user to categorize their posts and content using freely chosen keywords, and this is called hashtagging. Hashtagging was first popularized in the platform called Twitter way back in 2007. Now, it is widely being used in other platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Hashtags are composed of two parts, the first one being the pound sign, the second one being the keyword. Those combined form what we call the hashtag. One more feature of Web 2.0 is what we call rich user experience. As mentioned a while ago, Web 2.0 introduced what we call dynamic web pages. These web pages allows the interaction between the website and the user, allowing the user to create new content and the website interacting with it, responding to it. For example, if you like a photo, the blue button will light up. If you receive a notification, you will receive a notification tone and see that the notification has 
a sign on it. When you receive a friend request, of course, you will also have a notification on the checker. That is what we call rich user experience. Web 2.0 also allows the user to participate in the creation and in improving a website. The owner of the website is not only the person who can change the layout, the landscape, and the contents of the website. This is what we call user participation. One more feature of Web 2.0 is what we call long term. These are services that are offered on demand rather than a one-time purchase. A great example of this is when you subscribe into an internet service provider. You only pay for what you use. For example, you use only one month worth of internet, you will only pay for that certain amount. The internet also provides a lot of tools and software that the user can subscribe to instead of buying a paid software for use. This feature is called Software as a Service. An example of this is Google Docs. Google Docs is a direct alternative for Microsoft Word, as well as Google Sheets for Microsoft Excel, and Google Slides for Microsoft PowerPoint. There are also a lot of image editing software, such as Pixelr, which can be used as an alternative for Adobe Photoshop. The internet has a lot of tools and software that we can use for free. We just need to know where to look. Of course, in looking for stuff, we may stumble upon a lot of different responses, a lot of different information from different countries, races, from different opinions, different peoples, genders, and etc. This is what we call mass participation. Diverse opinions from all around the globe are present in the internet. Some are true, some are false. We need to verify which are true and false before we believe things on the internet. And speaking of the internet, it hasn't even stopped evolving yet. Now, we have what we call the semantic web or the web 3.0. The machines are able to process data in which the internet will give the user the data they need for the things they want. For example, you have search for soccer. In the next couple of days, the internet will give you advertisements related to soccer, videos related to soccer, pictures, ads, and the likes related to that sport. In case that you search for Mobile Legends, League of Legends, and other games, the internet will give you advertisements related to them. However, the semantic web is not yet fully realized because of some boundaries or some obstacles that they need to surpass. One of this is compatibility. Not every HTML website can provide Web 3.0 features. Another concern is security, data security to be precise. Because machines are constantly saving information and personal data from a user, security has always been the question when using Web 3.0. Another one is vastness. The World Wide Web has a billion number of internet web pages, in which Web 3.0 is very hard to implement on all of those. That is why Web 3.0 hasn't been fully realized to its full potential yet. Vagueness and the logic in which the machines will run is also an obstacle in the realization of Web 3.0. As the world of ICT continues to grow, it has focused on several innovations which help businesses and several other people which are inclined to ICT. Here are some trends that are the front runners in the innovation of the ICT. First one is convergence. Convergence is the synergy of technological advancements to work on a similar goal or task. The perfect example for this is a smartphone. A smartphone is a combination of a camera, a telephone, a music player, and a digital personal assistant. All in which has the goal to make your life easier, to entertain you, and etc. Next trend is social media. This trend is very famous, especially in this generation. We have a lot of social media websites like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, and a lot more. However, not all websites fall under one category. 
Each of those websites have their own category and cater to specific needs that the user needs. The first category of a social media are social networking sites. Social networks are websites like Facebook and Google+. They allow you to create your own account so that you can collaborate with other people, connect with other people, communicate with other people even if they are far away. That is social networking. It connects people. The next category of a social media website are bookmarking sites. Basically, bookmarking sites allow you to save and store links that you want to save. It's like putting a bookmark on the book that you haven't finished reading yet so that when you want to continue reading the book, you just open it, no? look for the bookmark, and there you have it. You can continue reading the book from where you stop. Bookmarking sites are nothing different than those. They allow you to save those links so that you can come back to them to the time when you need them. Social news, on the other hand, allow the users to create their own account, post their own news articles, and allow them to comment to other news articles, vote on specific articles that they want, and then those voted or the most voted uh, news articles are then shown more prominently. Examples are Reddit and Dig. Media sharing websites are YouTube and Instagram. These allow the users to share to other people the content they have made. May they be a video, a photograph, or a sound recording. Microblogging are sites like Twitter, which allow the users to post short updates rather than letting them post a long article about uh, a, a story of their life or a vacation. They allow the users to have a specified number of characters to post on their uh, platform. On the other hand, blogs and forums allow their users to have longer updates. Usually, forums are used for discussions like uh, tips and tricks, uh, fixes, debates, and etc. Another trend in ICT that is very popular today are mobile devices or what we call the mobile technology. These range from different platforms, different brands, different products, and etc. Mobile technology has also introduced mobile data in which we have 2G, 3G, and 4G, and the newest one which is 5G, which is the fastest mobile internet available today. There are different operating systems for different phones. We will tackle them one by one. Firstly, iOS. Basically, this is the proprietary operating system of Apple. It is only available to iPhones. Next one is Android. It is an operating system owned by Google, in which Samsung, Xiaomi, Realme, Vivo, Oppo, and all other phone brands use today. BlackBerry OS is an operating system that is used by the BlackBerry for their phones back then. It is a proprietary operating system meaning other phone companies cannot use the BlackBerry OS. Symbian OS, on the other hand, is the original smartphone operating system. It was used by older phones like Nokia 3310, Nokia 6600, Nokia 1100, those cell phones with a keypad and two megapixel cameras, and etc. Another operating system is what we call WebOS. Before, it was a smartphone operating system. But now, it is widely used on LG televisions, which are what we call smart TVs. Windows Mobile, on the other hand, is an operating system made by Microsoft for a plethora of devices such as smartphones and pocket computers. The last trend that we are going to talk about is what we call assistive media. Assistive media was founded by David Erdotti back in 1996. It is meant to help those people who cannot read or those who are blind through the first online text-to-speech platform. This has helped a lot of people to smash barriers between those people who they cannot communicate to through written media. And those are the trends in ICT. That's it for today's video. Please don't forget to click the subscribe button down below and click the notification bell for you to be updated in our latest videos. That's it. Thank you very much and goodbye.